then you can connect the dots and create that customer journey to say you know this is why my touch point is low this is why my touch point is high these should be the key focus areas here's why they're facing a problem get in the customer service information and say let's sit down and just collate all information related to this one touch point and see why is there a drop off how do we now turn this this inevitable gap between the two episodes of usage uh, to the advantage of the app owner or the app marketer to make sure that they are retained first question uh, to you vaishali is why would why would a company want to build such an app and why would users want to install such apps is it because of uh, on the go convenience or is it what, what do you think what's your perspective on that so far see i'm very very excited to be here today and i think it's a very fun conversation that we're going to have um i don't think while i completely agree with you that occasional apps are intended to be used occasionally i think a lot of it has to do with the customers that they're targeting right mm-hmm. so say for example today you and i might not travel that often but we still have a travel app uh cause right. if we travel Yeah. So I feel that there are two aspects of this that I like to think about. The first and the foremost are the actual users who use it who actually travel very often, keep traveling to work across different parts of India internationally. I know my friends, one of my friends is based in Germany and he travels so much. He lives in a suitcase and he keeps wow. traveling. <laughs> right. Um so for him he knows all the points, he knows the in and outs, he knows everything. The third second type I think is definitely I said three second I think there are three the second type are people like you and me who travel but not too much but we have it in case we need it and it's yeah just in case like a go to convenience part right yeah there are third ones that are that I am a personal category of uh, when it comes to like gym or uh, apps or like exercise apps or diet apps. that i want to work towards the ideal self and i feel right. that, that app will help me or remind me ki acha vishali pani pee lo ki so i remember to drink 4 liters of water every day right. or to say you know you haven't logged your calories log your calories right. so there are people who do use the calorie count every single day and religiously do but there are people like me too who are like I just need a nudge or a reminder, and that app helps me, keeps me on my toes. Right. Um, so while they can be designed for o- occasional, they might not. There are various categories of consumers, uh, th- and the way that people perceive and consume the app can be very different based on their objective of why they want to use the app and why are they actually downloading it. Most of the time, today's day and age, even social media knows your algorithm, right? So it's not like I am actually going and finding that one particular app called Better Me. As in, I see, uske itne ads, itne ads. Now I'm like, I'll just click it. It'll say, do Pilates at home, twenty eight days and lose weight. You know, so yeah. I'm not. I didn't even think I was this, but this was the first thought that I had when I'm talking to you about social media because that's the app I've seen the most. But I haven't downloaded it yet. But I always open it and I'm like, "Arey chodo, forget it. I'm not gonna do it." But I almost click it. So for them, it's still a conversion. It's making that behavior say, "Okay, check it out." You know, right. it's pushing your ideal self. So I think today, with the data being spread across and being so open, it's not necessary that I'm looking out for it. The apps are more look are actually looking out for you. Right. Right. Um. Yeah, I think you you are right. I think you have actually covered both the types of apps I mentioned. One is those that are actually uh, where the let's say the use case by its very nature is not very frequent. Like for example, paying insurance bills. Maybe you know if you are on a monthly plan, you will go once a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are on a yearly plan, maybe once a year. Uh, right? If 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 it's like a vacation packages, maybe it's also like once in a few months. so i was kind of referring to those apps as one category and the second is what you mentioned where the app does not restrict you from using it more frequently but then uh, the kind of person you are or the kind of goals you set uh, it leads to a certain type of frequency yeah. so yeah. we are going to cover both yeah you were saying something yeah and then there are these other types of apps also you know these days they're very digilock is a very very popular indian app where you can actually store your documents in an order and format no one's every going to go and look for their documents every day 
Exactly. But the minute you need it, but the minute you need it, you know where to go find it, and that's going to be DigiLock app, right? I'm I'm not even based in India, but I still know about it. Right. So, of course. I of think course. that's where that's where it all comes down to is knowing that you might need it someday, and then that thing only becomes your trusted source. And that's why I have so many apps I don't delete because one day I will use it. <laughs> right. So then, um, let's let's talk about uh, what is unique to these apps that are kind of you know designed for for mm-hmm. uh, gap in the usage. So the thing is, they by the very nature of use cases, you have like a few weeks in between the usage, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, this is this is again by design or by intention of the yeah. company, and it's not uh, it's not the user who is limiting it. So this kind of uh, now. leads to a situation which is kind yeah. of specific to this category of apps and it's a very interesting situation in fact mm-hmm. that's what motivated us to to have, have this, this uh, topic <laughs> <laughs> exactly so uh the thing uh, the way i look at it is if you don't do anything in that time period between one use and the next use uh it's kind of like a pretty long period of like silence right now if you don't do anything i think it's it's a threat because uh, unless the app is like super important like digilock for example digilocker is a is an example of an app which maybe does not have too many competitors maybe the trust value of the government app is like so high that people don't consider any alternatives but if you imagine a situation where let's say it's not it, there are competitors who are offering similar kind of apps uh so i feel that if you don't do anything it's going to lead to a threat that people might kind of forget about the app and you know the competitors might be up to some some strategies in the meantime so this is what i feel is the is the heart of the topic that what how do we take advantage of this this time between the this use and the next use and actually turn that to our advantage because i feel that's where all the uh, all the secret to retain these people lies uh, i think you you made a great point about uh, digilocker i love that point because it's it's talking about value although the frequency is not high i think you are hinting at the super value of that app so that you know and it's so clearly mapped to a use case that the moment you said it's like running shoes nike it's like that right Where do I find my documents electronically? It's in DigiLocker. I agree with you. I hundred sure. percent agree with uh, you. So, so <laughs> right. I want to pick your brains on how do we now turn this this inevitable gap between the two episodes of usage uh, to the advantage of the app owner or the app marketer to make sure that they are retained. So, share with us. Uh, what, yeah. What you have? Of course. So I think there are so many aspects of it. Right. Let's take. while people like i just mentioned you know some of them want value you said that so well you know they're looking for value and they do that some people are just learning how to be digitally savvy and so they say okay we'll try this app nahi chala to theek hai chal gaya to okay good you know most of the times i just do it um third time is curiosity people like us who are constantly in the world of tech want to know and be updated with everything that's happening so we consume a lot also as customers while we are professionals in the world we consume a lot as customers too and so i think sure. that our curiosity is leads us to downloading these apps that we necessarily don't use um the biggest challenge so you have to first and foremost as as strategists or you know marketing professionals who are struggling with understanding or optimizing the user acquisition cost or being able to maintain their strategic partnerships with their partners because there is a lack of retention and engagement these are bigger challenges to look at you know yep. people undownload in undownload the app because uninstall the app because they are like oh limited usage ye to main use nahi karta download it uninstall kar lo that's such a common practice because yep. they want they love their photos and videos more than the <laughs> app that they think will add value <laughs> correct <laughs> Yeah. So this increased uninstall rates are also alarming, um, and I think that that is again circles back to what value are you offering? What mm-hmm. is it that's making you stay? You know, this morning I was reading a book about um, influencing people, and very interesting that thing that they mentioned is about emotional questions. 
Now we have never heard of EQ. Yes. Well, we have never heard of EQ with apps. How many people have actually spoken about how an app is making you feel? Right. And Very important thing. Yeah. It's so important because you're while you're saying app is your front face, it's basically the app is a technology that's that's you that's representing you mm-hmm. uh, to communicate with the customer. You're not going to be at the front and say hi, my name is Krishna. It's going to be like hi, I'm Digilock. And so yes. then it's a whole different perception. But how do you humanize that experience for the end user to say, "Yar, it's in a mega, but a good feel." Hota hai. Did like you said a very good point. With Digilock, they have a safety, they have a security, but with other apps, they don't. Mm-hmm. Why? There's something that Digilock is providing, right? A backbone, a strong support. Yes. So, a per- as a customer, you're feeling okay, even if I'm using the app once in six months, whenever I require it. I trust this app. Yeah, it's actually an emotional reason. Exactly, there. exactly my point. So it circles down back to what emotion are you offering your customer through the app? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and based on that, you're able to identify what problem you're solving for them. Now we know about this app, very popular app called Flow, that a lot of women use. Mm-hmm. But did you know they have a segment of male customers too? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's surprising actually. That's interesting because think about it. It's you wouldn't think of it as your first instinct, but they actually do. Because if they need to learn something about their partner or anybody else in their family, this is education that they're not going to go look out for it for themselves. Like they have to go find it, right? Yeah. So I found that very interesting that a percentage of people now you wouldn't think they're your target target customers. They might not use it very frequently, but they're still using it for knowledge. So that's like an almost like, like a secondary purpose to the app. Correct, correct. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about that, and I said, okay, that's very interesting. So the second thing that an app should provide is knowledge, is education, is what are you offering them? Did you can read right. some blogs? You can is it has nothing to do with them, but it is a secondary impact of how that is so uh, um that is impacting people within their orbit. Right. So I was like, very very interesting. So. First and foremost, I think when when such strategies come up, you should definitely think about what value you're offering, what emotion you want to create, and so I want to dive a bit more into it. And as a marketing professional, it would be very interesting to think about what's the pre-step before they actually are clicking on that download button. Mm-hmm. Why do you think your customer is clicking on the download button? It's a very very big question, actually. Yeah, nobody thinks about it. They're like, "Huh, we should have our downloads X number her minute increase होना चाहिए, इतना retain होना चाहिए." It's so tra- it's such a transactional game that you're not thinking of the transformation you're helping people evolve into. What what is what are you doing as an app or as a brand or as a service you're offering mm-hmm. that you're transforming people's lives today? What's the what's the role of that app in their life? Exactly. Like you said, back came we came back to value. We came back to emotion. I'm just how do marketers think about this? Is a strategy is is an offering or insight that I would like to share? Is how they should think about their pre step? Is what's making them click that download button? What problem are you solving for them? And then do your campaigns and marketing around it. When you mm-hmm. do your algorithms, your social media marketing, your paid marketing, you're then pitching a problem solving solution rather than saying here just take the app. Right. The point is not to get enough downloads. The point is to to reduce the uninstallment rate and to increase engagement, the open rate of your app, week on week basis. The second thing I think is building a community. Um, now, if you look at Apple Watch, um, there's Samsung Health, there is Huawei Health, there's Samsung Fitness, all these fitness apps. Build a community. It's like share your knowledge with X Y person. Share how well you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you look at these professional um, personal trainers, they always share ex- share the the achievement or the celebration of that person who is transformed. And yeah. suddenly, you feel like somebody celebrating you because you have a place, an environment where you can celebrate yourself. or right. ask questions so building a community i feel is a great way to keep your customer engaged 
because now suddenly you're telling them look you're not alone in this journey there's so many other people why don't you join hands and say okay tell me more about this tell me more about this how are you finding the app what are you learning from this or how are you facing xyz situation in your life um so many things that you learn you know there there's so many journaling apps also that say is this a problem you're facing here are 10 other people who are facing the same problem yeah Just chat with them learn from them here's how they solved it or here's how they think so suddenly you're looking for a human factor suddenly you're looking for a human factor in an app so you're humanizing their experience by saying you know you're not alone there's a community with you come join hands and we'll do it together right you're not alone exactly cuz end of the day it's you and your phone na yeah everything is in your phone you can be in a room <laughs> but not to make your person feel lonely is what needs to hit home for them to say you know this app gives me something that i feel good about myself i feel like i belong here there's a sense of belonging that you're offering them right it's it's almost like what you're saying is the app is uh, not really an app but like a doorway through doorway yes. to you know a, a world on the other side like it's got yeah. people it's got discussions yeah it has literally why do you think these bumble tinder shari.com apps and all these dating apps are doing so well they have a friend next door right? they they connect uh, connect they connect people. human to human yep so that's why they're doing well that's what you need to do whether you're a product or a service you need to make them feel human and that's where the biggest challenge i think as businesses uh, businesses are really facing yeah i was i was actually going to to you know kind of uh, talk a little bit more about this because it's a very interesting angle the angle of community served inside an app yeah right and i've seen several apps do this you are right in fact uh, although I, personally i'm not like a great fan of participating in communities but i'm one of those silent uh, you know readers i just me too me too yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm like be there but not talk about it and yeah not really like there. yeah I, i i get you i get you so um there are certain businesses where for example some of the people who might be uh, listening to us right now might be scratching their heads thinking hang on this idea sounds really nice but how do i make that happen in my industry maybe mm-hmm. if we take an example of uh, uh and and feel free we can we can riff on this right back and forth like maybe insurance is is a is an example where you pay your premium or maybe you you learn a little bit about your policy uh you know the famous uh, problem with all insurance policies we we forget what we purchased uh you know 10 days down the line somebody asks you okay what did you buy like yeah. what are you insured for and you're yeah. like um actually i i can't remember right i can't remember that's yeah that's true nobody can remember yeah. that so exactly. suppose suppose uh, the the managers of such an app try to solve that problem so it falls right into your idea of knowledge uh value anyway you know the app is adding value because it it lets you pay th- pay your premiums on time uh raise any claims keep status updates etc but on the community angle how would you begin to think and and i'm i'm not looking for instant answers but it's i think the thought process that that if you articulate i think it's really going to help our our audience i'm telling you this from a very naked eye perspective is i don't know much about insurance okay yep and so if i was to design my ideal customer journey on an app i would basically say you know if i have selected few options that i'm looking for a um a travel insurance as an example because i travel a lot i would actually be interested to find out who others are traveling and what kind of insurances they're using which premium plans are they creating so once i've signed up to an insurance plan and i have this plan saying i can actually talk to other people i want to know other people's journeys other people's perspective because i'm interested in travel so what you'll have what will end up happening is when now if i'm sitting here i don't have an insurance i don't have an insurance app okay right. mm-hmm. so i have to go to google and say tell me more about travel insurance and then i sit and read on reddit and on these yeah. different things and find it but if i had an app i would just scroll on my phone like i scroll instagram or any other platform on my phone 
एंड रीड अच्छा इसके साथ ऐसा हुआ था व्हेन दे वेंट टू दिस प्लेस उनके साथ ऐसे हुआ था दिस इज हाउ द इंश्योरेंस कंपनी डेल्ट विद इट एंड दे डेल्ट सो वेल व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज बाय रीडिंग अदर पीपल्स एक्सपीरियंसेस ए आई एम गेटिंग टेस्टिफाई दैट दे आर अ गुड कंपनी बिकॉज़ आई हैव अ गुड प्लान be mm-hmm. how they dealt with that situation so i am preparing myself for a next step whenever anything god forbid happens to my travel mm-hmm. i am ready for how to deal with it because i already know what the insurance is going to require from me so next mm-hmm. time i'm traveling i'll make sure i have x y z documents printed or you know handy in my hand or maybe can be in the app whatever it is so by building a community based on your insurance plan you actually have the ability for introducing people and opening a forum of chat to talk about and learn about how other people have had better experiences with the insurance provider right so and then you know this app can send me reminders and maybe next time based on hearing other people's plan i might just increase my claim and right. say oh, you know this this really is well trusted so pata chal jayega na ki okay by knowing people's experiences and that way i'll also learn about oh if i didn't join x insurance if i didn't get my claim from x insurance i got from another one other people have not had good experiences with it because my focus is travel insurance any i'm only talking to travelers so i am more interested in that particular thing in comparison to someone my recently a friend uh, um she joined a new um in business and she joined new organization as an employee and she was a bit confused she like oh i'm married but I don't know if I'm my children's education is something that should be claimed, and she didn't know what to do, and so she asked me, and I said I don't know because I'm not married. Um, so it was very interesting conversation, and I wondered if something like that would have been easy on our hands and our fingertips to just go to, you know, and right. say okay, in a family plan, this is how X insurance deals with it, this is how Y insurance deals with it, and these are what info more more information I can get. then she had to ask three or four of her other colleagues to ask if that particular insurance is included or that particular thing is written in their contract so right. i was like you know if we had these things in our fingertips there are so many things while we are so advanced in technology these legal stuff are something we all struggle with in and out yep. this legal tech or fintech is while it's growing and it's it's really doing very well i think there's a point where we still don't have enough knowledge and education about it and by offering a community where we can talk about it have a forum and connect with like minded people it would be an absolute game changer right yeah i think i think it's a it's a very valid point although it also kind of you know of course uh, it's not really in the scope of this conversation but you know thinking about building that community and what kind of features to provide in that community itself is like a next step for people to figure out but i think this idea should be taken seriously that uh, <laughs> let's yeah, work think, on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that idea should be taken seriously certainly i feel that th- there is uh, there is potential in this idea that if you if you cannot uh, for some reason you know increase the increase the frequency of usage at least you have to create more touch points right people will come uh, back to you if you connect exactly. with them you know you give them an insurance plan say tum agle saal ab jab insurance khatam hone pe aayega tab tum dekh lena then it's not going to work you know it's <laughs> going to be like okay then i'll delete the app i know november mein hota hai i'll come back to you again or maybe never download you but the fact yeah. that them return again is only through human touch right right and and uh, do you have any other uh, directions to to think in uh regarding this you know yeah other one that i was actually thinking about is um education content is huge mm-hmm. that like i mentioned we obviously spoke about building a community and a forum but being able to self help being able to tell the user like you know i was telling during our pre banter session i was telling you about flow how you don't know things you're not sure if you want to google or no but flow will still give you that information if you're looking for something Today's day and age, there's so much that, as women, you feel a stereotype to ask, or is not sure if you should Google search it, or if there is something that not only women but even men, I'm sure, feel the same way. So you have this hitchhikeahat that you feel that oh, if I should do it or not do it. But when you have an app, or you know, when you can actually go and read somewhere that you feel is a credible source, mm-hmm. then you have an information deck on your fingertips. 
so right. whether it is insurance whether it is your health whether it is you know a diet whatever whatever industry you're in you know today home appliances somebody was telling me about industrial design and um, and how different people struggle with warranties and i said man that's so right and so you know being able to inform your customer about your x to y x to uh, x a to z <laughs> sorry i messed up my alphabets there <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, I meant X factor, uh, which is the experience yeah. factor, and I got stuck over there. <laughs> I stumbled upon. Um, but being able to let them know everything related to their warranty on just a fingertip by is interesting because you're not going to remember about your warranty information. I love how on Apple, for example, um, you don't need to know when your warranty expires, but it's just in within your settings where you can go see. under coverage and be able to get that information ki kab tak your uh right right warranty is validated point being that same thing applies to zillion other things my dad is a very old school person uh he loves to collect bills and then mark dates on it and say is din ki ye expiry hai he is one of those very typical people who loves to do that i'm like itne paper you you know you've just stored it inside now it's become so old throw it is like no 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 it should still be kept for documentation purposes but education can be anywhere once an app can offer you something that is very valuable for you where you can self help yourself mm-hmm. it's an absolute game changer that electrical businesses and appliances and other apps can offer you so um can i can i summarize this or kind of uh you know what i've heard on the self help angle is it like you're saying you take something which is complex or nuanced and then you basically simplify it yes. put the information uh, at the fingertips of people yeah uh, especially nowadays you know this is also this whole new trend of generative ai <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you just have to ask and you know uh, uh, outcomes uh, you know which is like Uh, it, it it feels like somebody is typing at the speed of like a million words a minute but yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah. uh i think that's what i'm that's what i'm hearing that yeah. you're suggesting that we take and i think uh, this is also pretty powerful i i like this strategy um because what it's saying is hey irrespective of the industry you're in there are always likely to be some aspects of your industry that are kind of uh, not so straight forward yeah. or a little tricky or you know hard to retain in the memory right yes so you're saying find ways to to make them simple to make them stick in the memory etc yes right today why why are we very uh, stuck on uh, reels right like you love reels because they're engaging they hook create engaging and hooked content do that connect and associate your social media into your app so they can actually scroll give them that scrollable experience if they that's what they get hooked on to kind of replicate the human behavior on what they have uh on social media on your app as well that's something we did when um the previous company that i was working for um it was very interesting finding about now money and uh, during the entire ux redesign experience and everything we learned that these users heavily scroll and you will never see a fintech app scrolling but our app was yeah. the first app that actually was completely scrollable so you would go till the end be able to see things around and it was one of the best ones that we were first ever actually in the UAE to launch like a scrollable uh, app fintech app that's i mean that sounds awesome actually <laughs> it uh, was because, <laughs> because it was it's, uh, it's like an insight right you have taken what people are so used to doing which is like that um scroll and you're just bringing that into a place where one wouldn't normally expect to see it yeah right yeah i mean that's a after you've said it it kind of sounds oh yeah that's obvious but yeah it's not <laughs> I guess very it's one of those ideas that it's until somebody tells you it doesn't strike you strike you yeah because you know based on the other um ux designs that we had as options for the home page um for, for the home page people were like no no fintech should be a certain way and this is how it should be and how can it right. be scrollable and you know there should be a bottom nav and this should be there these is rules who's created these rules and design rules right 
Mm-hmm. So um, I was very like, yeah, we definitely did that. It was a huge win, and we saw the interaction of customers who actually ended up scrolling till the end because they're so used to it. Um, you, uh, how did you like hit upon this uh, idea of? Uh, because I'm I'm trying to kind of you know portray it like, hey, watch out if if you already see people preferring a certain way of interaction. Uh, try to sort of. provide scope for that in in yeah. your app right so great question and i think one of the things that we did was um, it was a learning and an insight from another research that we kind of fed into this one and said chalo try kar lete hain agar ye option hota to how would they deal with it so we learned from another research that we were doing is what kind of apps do you use and so facebook in facebook was the most popular one because this is this app is designed for low income migrant workers who receive salary in their account once a month and it's an occasional app according to them right but by adding new features we made their apps more um by adding new features that they can use more often um we were actually able to increase our open rate allow them to make smaller transactions on our app and plus Lead to them scrolling because we then learned all oh, who Facebook use कर रहे हैं and here right. they're not and in fact from then we matched insights from different results one was data aspect of it one was this learning and from data we saw that nobody was even the the bottom half was not clear or you know they were not able to see a certain or understand a certain thing so even we did voice modulation for them which was damn cool because these are low income migrant workers you know if you are able to create app for um low literacy level professionals mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then you can crack it for anybody else uh, so i love now money i promote now money even though i don't really work with them right now um they are definitely one of my most favorite apps in the world right i mean i, I can clearly see that using that app would be fun because hey, you you put uh, the, the social media experience in there Tell us a little more about the voice modulation thing that you just yeah. Mentioned. So we also learned that you know these people do a lot of voice notes. So our customer service teams and everything they would um, keep sending us voice notes on our mm-hmm. WhatsApp. They're like, "What the? You write it, na? You type it out, and you don't, and they don't understand things and everything." So we actually recorded our voices and uh, put them there. Different languages in which they could use the app. And so, if they pressed on the speaker option, when you click on it, you can actually hear mobile recharge. Ye function function ka ye matlab hai. Like this feature will lead yeah. you to you to do this. Isse aap local recharge kar sakte. Isse aap kahi pe bhi dunia ka recharge kar sakte. Like around those lines. Right. right. But then by then they understood. Like we heard questions and we would say, oh, we can we understand English. Now we can't create an app in English, you know. Uh, so by understanding what that feature meant. means they were then making a conscious choice to click on the next button because that was one other thing that we learned from our research is that they don't like clicking that button or anything else right and then okay. obviously there is you know besides all of this stuff there are these very common things such as rewards and points that a lot of people are doing which um apps are doing to keep them engaged i have a tim hortons app uh, which is very easy to kind of get some points on and every time i go i scan my barcode i don't use it i only use it when i go to tim hortons for a coffee which is maybe once in two weeks mm-hmm. but i know ki acha i'll get some points so i go and i open it and i every time i go there i don't remember the name of the app but i know that i'll get a reward of that app so i keep that app right so it's, it's so psychological right ki are mere ko kuch mil raha hai it's a value that yes. i'm going to get and then four times later they are like oh you can scratch a coupon and get a new free coffee so i know i want my free coffee so yes. i will keep it and it's still there on my phone absolutely so you've touched upon uh, you know just for sake of summarizing yeah so you've touched upon uh, being very clear right at the time of acquisition what is the problem that your app is solving like make a clear promise so that people know what to expect hmm. and then you touched upon Uh, among the strategies to retain people uh, you touched upon like value yeah. that's that's the logical starting point mm-hmm. second you said like emotional uh, like emotional connection yeah and then you you also touched upon the idea of community 
I think mm-hmm. we we kind of spoke about that in some detail, um, and I think that's a great point because that's that's where you humanize your app and you create that sense of belonging. Um, you also touched upon educational content and knowledge, which makes uh, difficult concepts easy and uh, and basically also serves in a way of self help. Yeah. Right. Uh, now let's talk about. uh more of these and also we touched upon you know the last one was rewards and points and loyalty mechanisms mm. uh again powerful trigger for people to remember that hey you know wasn't i supposed to get something here yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah great like literally you know i didn't i went to a movie that day um to a cinema and they like there was just a bar said do you have this app ऐसा नाम तो देखा हुआ है समवेयर आई मस्ट हैव इट देन आई आस्क देम इज दिस दिस ऐप बिकॉज़ आई हैड इट आई डिडंट इवन रिमेंबर आई हैड इट बिकॉज़ आई स्टोर्ड इट इन वन फोल्डर एंड देन इन दैट फोल्डर आई केप्ट ऑल द फालतू लाइक लॉट ऑल दिस ओकेजनल यूज आई कीप इट बिकॉज़ आई नो आई वांट टू बट दिस इज हाउ अ कस्टमर थिंक्स अनफॉर्चूनेटली यप दिस इज द ट्रुथ ऑफ दे थिंक इट्स लाइक आई डोंट नो व्हेन आई विल यूज इट फॉर नाउ लेट मी जस्ट स्टोर इट ऑल इन वन प्लेस points Or yeah, it missed out. It missed out on the opportunity. Exactly, it missed out on the opportunity. This is where I feel like customers, like when you're around in Zomato, if you see, they'll tell you here's where you can find a deal. Now I don't open Zomato every day, but Zomato has told me you're in this location, so why don't you do this thing? Right, the that's like going out of the way to help. And, right, but these are the experiences people want. Now they're not going to remember you. The app has to remind you that listen, you need to use me because you're here now. यहाँ मेरी चलती है types. So yeah. like going out of the way and you know looking out for the users right exactly like kind of being openly there on their side yeah yeah to remind them say you know i'm here and uh, like share like the app that i was using is called share which is a ue based app and um, they have like different um, tie ups with different businesses and brands and everything mm-hmm. else so i should have really realized that oh i but i can't connect ki if i'm going to walk cinemas then i have to use share it but if i'm going to tim hortons i have to use another app how will a customer remember all this information you should be able to provide the customer saying hey if you're here why don't make sure you use our app so it's by kind that, of almost like the app putting its hand up saying hey it's me exactly, exactly. <laughs> not, not that one not this one it's me right yeah 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 that's yeah, how that's a, that, no that makes sense yeah that makes sense uh because you just completely removing this uh, mental effort on the part of, of the, the user customer, to like yes. recall yeah. and you're also kind of not taking any chances because one of the big problems is sometimes people are in their own world like you don't know what's happening in their life at that point of time right yeah and then you miss out on the value that you have to offer the customer the customer misses out on your value and then this app is never opened again so yeah. by showing them that you know when i was in delhi once um A couple of years back, I went to this place, and uh, they're like, "Hey, here are a few amazing restaurants around the corner that you can explore." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Man, that's cool! I can check it out." Because I see, like, it was dinner time. I was hungry, so mm-hmm. by very understanding, timely, yeah, very timely. Exactly, by using data, you can actually offer personalized experiences to customers, saying, "Make sure you have these rewards here. We'll give you ten percent off if you go within these two hours if you're around the area." तो देन आई रिमेंबर कि अरे मेरे को पांच परसेंट ऑफ मिला या दस परसेंट ऑफ मिला देन बेस्ड ऑन दैट आई विल गो बैक एवरी टाइम आई एम देयर आई विल नेवर फॉरगेट सी व्हेन एन ऐप गिव्स यू समथिंग यू डोंट फॉरगेट इट राइट यू विल रिमेंबर इट यू विल से हां फ्रॉम दिस ऐप व्हाई डू यू गो बैक टू Amazon व्हाई डू यू गो बैक टू Paytm दे गिव यू समथिंग इन रिटर्न फॉर यू डूइंग समथिंग इट्स अ वेरी मेमोरेबल थिंग राइट एंड यू डोंट फॉरगेट बिकॉज़ आई मीन टू बी ऑनेस्ट दिस इज अ वर्ल्ड वेयर यूजुअली पीपल डोंट गिव मच या एग्जैक्टली व्हेन द ऐप डज exactly but when the app does it and uh, it really kind of puts a mark in your memory saying yeah you know nice yeah. nice good app yeah then i will keep this app it's me kaam ki cheez hai right right so that's how they're kind of winning you over and making sure that you know you you, you really have the connection even if it's like 
okay you know i understand i don't have to open it every day but uh, i know it's got my back yes yes yeah. exactly yeah that's a very like a priceless feeling to have right that there is an again, app for yeah again yeah. sorry please finish yeah like it's it's a very priceless feeling to know that uh, there is somebody who's kind of looking out for you and i mean that's very that feel that makes you feel really great in today's world yeah yeah right which They're is like which is very like, <laughs> like <laughs> there are a lot of promises but like the delivery rate is kind of low yeah and this uh, is where an emotional connection comes in and today i remember something that happened to me 4 years ago so randomly so the fact that i still remember about it and i'm talking about it here the app must be still on my phone or something right because correct. i remember that memory so the experience matters so we'll we'll switch to one important aspect uh, vaishali which is about uh, you also mentioned uh, like re- reminders right so i wanted to touch upon that do you feel that uh, how do you feel about this whole idea of notifications and uh the occasional gamification and things like that what's your experience with them uh how do people that you work with think about these things because uh we've we've talked a lot about the design and the the very concept of the app mm. which is which all i i would put it under value because community content personalization rewards and points i would put all of this under like the core proposition of the app itself uh so if you kind of shift gears to the engagement aspect stuff that's added occasionally from the outside like a notification or or like a challenge or something right what's generally been your i would like to know like your personal take on it plus what you've heard your clients and your other colleagues talk about these things that would be really helpful sure so um there are a few things right i feel like when it comes down to notifications now if you suddenly sit, comes on to what purpose you're doing it for mm-hmm. are you a doing it get your objective right are you doing it to tell the customer that listen i exist i exist i exist by the by the fifth or the sixth time they're going to be like i you no longer need to exist in my life i'm going to uninstall you <laughs> right right <laughs> you know it's a funny thing to say yeah so it they do that that is actually how customers are marketing or how marketers are setting campaigns and doing these all notification nudges cuz i used to do notification nudges so i know the in and outs of it um through the different tools that we would send and it is sometimes frustrating i had to actually have a proper conversation once with one of my colleagues i'm like we're not going to send this it's kind of very frustrating imagine being on the receiver side of it again and again you get it you're going to be like you know ek kahawat hai bolta sher aaya sher aaya sher aaya jab sher actually aaya to kya hoga nobody it's that you know what what is that you know uh, the boy who cried wolf right yeah. yeah so so i think the first thing and foremost is too much is not right um you need to think of the objective and come down to today if you're informing this user what is a customer going to do with this information what do you want them to do most of the time that message is not clear so even if you're sending a thousand messages to them without a clear call to action without right. telling them to how is this going to solve your problem or add value in your life it's pretty useless to send any notification right today businesses have the opportunity customers have the opportunity to control the notifications in their fingertips so yes. it's no longer about आप को भेजना वो भेजेगा हमें रिसीव करना है कि नहीं दैट्स द कस्टमर्स चॉइस एंड आई थिंक आई थिंक वन ऑफ द प्रीवियस पॉडकास्ट आई वाज जस्ट यू नो जोकिंग दैट द बेस्ट फीचर ऑफ एप्पल इज क्लियर ऑल राइट यू नो लेट देम एक्यूमुलेट एंड जस्ट डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल ऑफ देम विद लाइक वन बटन बिकॉज़ आई मीन दे दे काइंड ऑफ आई आई एग्री विद यू दे 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 रियली फ्लड यू एट टाइम्स एंड यू डोंट नो व्हाट टू डू विद देम sometimes mm. it's like me 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 right the, the yeah. message is all about like hey you know notice me and yeah so i think i don't think mm-hmm. it needs to be about notice me it's more like like i told you if suddenly i receive a notification now there are two types I'll, as a customer or a receiver think of this you're getting an app saying hey listen i'm here uh, or you can do this but i don't need it right now why would i care i'm just going to dismiss it right. other reason is hey you're here but check this out cuz i'll give you a 5% or check this out because here are a few recommendations you have 
I'm sure you must be hungry now. Uh, or timing those apps. I love how Zomato times those apps. To be very honest with you, right? Mm-hmm. So they time it very well. During lunch, they'll say, "Are you hungry? Biryani is waiting for you." Or right. they do these personalized notifications, which will make you think, "Yeah, I mean, I can actually eat their biryani." Book to lagi hai. Right. In comparison to saying, "Oh, you're here, and you know, here is you can find me, or here is what you can do," and it's a very generic app. So the messaging of the app. in my opinion matters a lot more than the notification itself tum 10 bhejo par tum value wale bhejo to sunsan sunega varna nobody is going to listen yeah right right so they've got to put a lot more effort in to actually make sure that it's um, you know the in, in one of the blogs that we wrote we yeah. we touched upon two parameters right one is yeah. is it useful and uh, second is is it potentially enjoyable yeah because sometimes you know even the goofy funny messages uh, also kind of get your attention and they do put that smile on your face like yeah. sometimes i get these uh, really goofy ones from these food apps like food delivery yeah. apps yeah oh and, my god uh, swiggy like, also sends a lot of apps yeah yeah my notifications and how about gamification uh, vishali have you come across it have you used it what what have you heard about it in your circles I I mean gamification is any day a great experience. I don't I think it boils down to, but I think it's more at a mature level in my opinion. I don't think businesses need to dive into it right away. Then if they need to, I wouldn't say this should be a go-to strategy. कि ये करूँगा या ये करूँगी तो मतलब मेरे customers increase हो ही जाएंगे. Um, yeah. My retention rate yeah, will. Placing that bet. Mm. Yeah, but it's more of the other things, and then once you feel like. सब कुछ करके अगर नहीं हुआ देन इन्वेस्ट इन टू गेमिफिकेशन गेमिफिकेशन इज अ मच बिगर इन्वेस्टमेंट आई फील फ्रॉम अ टेक्नोलॉजी परसपेक्टिव एंड रिसोर्स रिक्वायर्ड इन कंपेरिजन टू डूइंग अदर थिंग्स व्हिच कैन बी इजियर क्विक विंस इन द इन द रोड राइट I'm just thinking. In the interest of time, we do have a few more questions. Yes, yes. I, I was just going to like okay. uh, go to the Q and A. So I think that pretty much brings. Uh, I think we've, we've like covered a wide wide array of strategies yeah and uh, thank you for like making it so fun so we'll move to the q and a we'll move to the q and a and uh, so we have uh, one question which is like since this webinar is titled strategies for increasing user retention for occasional apps if we come from the perspective that the app is already relegated to an occasional status and not accessed frequently do you think adding new features would actually work or is it better to reimagine the entire app and launch it as a 2.0 ooh um so there are two things comes down to two things right i think the first and the foremost is understanding if it is an occasional app and not going to be accessed frequently how by adding other features are you going to make it more an occasional um are those features something that are they are going to actually use in the daily lives uh, are they going to use it more often Mm-hmm. so that's the first and the foremost today if your feature is related to has to be related to four pillars okay everybody looks at these key four pillars in today's day and age or a benchmark of how somebody's life should be that's how i at least i look at it and i know a lot more people look at it is how is it going to help me physically financially mentally and emotionally these are four health factor health you know physical health mental health emotional health and mental uh, emotional financial health. Yeah, financial. yeah financial health is what we usually focus on and today's day and age even spiritual health is quite focused upon mm-hmm. yeah like meditation and all of that so is your app going to really impact on any of these four to five health factors directly that will help somebody mm-hmm. if yes then add that feature in uh right. because that means that you are actually helping them build a habit stack where your app can be injected into today look mm-hmm. at notion notion is about improving your if i had to look at it it was about a combination of mental health and financial health taki tum productivity apni bharao to tum apna career bana sako and you know you are mentally relaxed right so whatever feature you choose to add think how will would i use this every single day now if you're giving if your app is about um 
I don't know. I'm just thinking of a wide range of example. Travel. Let's take mm-hmm. let's take travel. Okay, if your app is more often about travel, where it's only related to booking tickets, right? But suddenly you are giving them a feature that allows them to tell you these are the local deals you have. Because you rose travel nahi karte, but it so is they don't still... know the yeah they don't know the local deals. Exactly. <laughs> so suddenly you're telling them, you know, check out the local deal here or do things locally here. They're more in, in, um, inclined to learn more about it, saying, "Oh, Dubai me ye bhi ho raha hai. I can go here also and check this out." In comparison to what's happening in Switzerland or Europe, and only checking flights. Yep. So how you can because then you're telling them adding value to their daily life. Because weekend pe kuch na kuch to karenge na for that. So they'll open the app during the weekday to t- plan their ki acha ye yahan pe acha hai ya ye is this is good or that's good. Right, <clears throat> right. So that is one way you can do it. Um, what well, if your feature you actually think is something that will impact them directly, then do it. Or else you will have to really restructure and re-strategize on the way you should um make a difference to a end user, and then like reimagine the entire two point zero. Great, great answer. And and I love the five dimensions: physical, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual. <clears throat> very good checklist to actually look at when you're building a new feature uh all right so archita says how can reward programs help keep occasional users come back i think we've touched upon it already yes um there is one question from shrikala which says what are some successful reengagement campaign strategies for users who haven't used the hospitality app in a long time mm. so what reengagement for people who have kind of disappeared for a while today in day and today's day and age you know you might have marriott app and hilton and sheraton ke sare all the apps in the world but you'll still not end up using it and the biggest reason you know i was doing a survey and a research as a participant recently and it was very interesting to think about it from a hospitality industry is how often are you going somewhere how often are you traveling and going mm-hmm. and staying somewhere particularly within the hospitality um like hilton or you know yeah. shared or whatever so if if there was a way to reengage then having by adding value to again local places is a great win so now telling them that our restaurant is here check it out or we have day pool facility for you or you know you have entered that you had a child because you booked a room as an example and so that information is stored you like we are doing a kids theme for christmas or we are doing this for this or you know we come check out a new uh, ramadan souk so or come celebrate um iftar with us so now right. what you are doing is telling them that look we are not coming and asking you to come and you know stay with us but we telling come spend 2 hours with us or 3 hours with us so by doing these smaller commitments to a bigger picture now they'll remember the iftar that they celebrated with you they will right. remember that your kids they, your kids could enjoy you they will remember that you know as a member i have a spa offer uh that i can go to because i am a member of hilton or any yeah. other brand So you're giving them small things. Why are you asking for bigger commitments? So by getting into smaller, asking them for smaller commitments of two hours, three hours, or one hour, as a matter of fact, for a lunch, a dinner, a little activity, a spa, or you know, get X percent off on your next deal. You or here is what write a review, and then you get ten percent on the next one. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. you. <clears throat> allowing them to say you know come back to me think of me only when you're booking your ticket but this and time it's uh, what i really love in this answer vishali is that you are you're saying hey think beyond the original transaction which might have been like sizable yes and you know which maybe is no longer on their mind or at least not right now yeah so like can i lower the ask Yeah, of can course. Can I lower the ask? Can I make it easier? Can I make yeah. it more fun? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just, yeah. Totally, totally on point. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And uh, 
there is one i think uh, one question we have which is challenges and opportunities in predicting reengagement with ai okay mm. so this is like this can pretty much launch another <laughs> webinar on its own yeah. <laughs> we have to keep that for the webinar we definitely i think we that that'll be a very fun very uh, that'll be quite a fun webinar um but i i think i want to just touch on this as two key things when it comes to predicting app in reengagement there's always going to be challenges because it's a very dynamic and ever evolving state um mm-hmm. so the challenge definitely is the dynamic temperament of what comes with engaging and customer behavior so that's never going to change yep. that is going to be a challenge that we just have to accept ki today what works 3 months later it's not going it may or may not work and 6 months later we don't know if it's going to work so whatever time we have we have now if a trend is working might as well jump in the well and go ahead with the trend to make some revenue out of it and then you know people will get done with it after a point mm-hmm. that's the first thing in terms of opportunity i think there is a lot a lot of opportunity today with day and age where ai can help you write campaigns where ai can help you actually do things and tell you how to integrate x y and z data with kpis and tell you every single thing you need to know you just have to plug it in it's like a plug and play system that's where ai comes into place how data fits into it is quite is dependent actually very heavily on how mature your data is internally mm-hmm. so if your internal data has you have you know google analytics you have app retention you have um what's the name um i forgot fire firebase firebase yeah thank you if you have firebase and now it's even injected into google uh, g4 right Mm-hmm. um so you are android information then you can connect the dots and create that customer journey to say you know this is why my touch point is low this is why my touch point is high these should be the key focus areas here's why they're facing a problem get in the customer service information and say let's sit down and just collate all information related to this one touch point and see why is there a drop off right it can be a form it can be increase in calls it can be um them not clicking something maybe the app is not opening it can be anything it can be literally anything but just collecting the data mostly because they are quite siloed it will really help you understand once you have understood that then the challenge is half you've solved half the problem because now you have to just implement the strategy either you give them some revenue and uh, you give them some you know incentive and say here's 5% open the app and get this deal or scratch a coupon and get something like that that will mm-hmm. retain them and make them come back to you with data that i think has worked very very well with every business that i've worked with and however we have injected analytics second thing in today's day and age when it comes to data the consumption of video is crazy crazy the way people are consuming video content is bad because whether it's reels whether it's youtube whether it's youtube shorts um everything there's a lot of video involved so by creating the right kind of uh, having the right data and point understanding what other content your da- uh, your consuming your customers are consuming and then based on that data sharing that kind of content with them to reengage them really helps so i'll give that as an example today if you know that your app insurance related stuff only I'll, i'll i'll pick on that same industry because we can go around in circles on different industries um in an insurance if there is an app that is very limited because like you know you're not coming back to it occasionally and everything but they are family people or you can from your data you understand that your highest uh, policy claimers are travel and families mm-hmm. then you show them that kind of content mm-hmm. because now based on the demographic and target audience you are actually creating content for them True. which will make them come back to your app and say oh you know what they'll actually tell me about this also and the, and make it very hooked like find out why your child needs an insurance or does not need an insurance so when you pick on their immediate family members 
in a very nice way to educate them it circles back to then creating that educational content building that community taking these strategies into place that we discussed everything is possible with data right. so first and foremost step is being a mature enough um business data driven business to make those data driven decisions to be able to create these reengagement strategies so go back and ask yourself one question today do i have access to all the data i need as a marketer mm-hmm. before i even think of my engagement strategy True. do i have it then think of the next step yeah and and i think uh, on this maturity curve uh lots of the lots of companies are actually now taking data a lot more seriously yes. compared to like let's say 3 years ago or uh, yeah. you know 4 years ago they are taking it very seriously and i think there are also lots of great tools and platforms you know including uh, the uh, upshot.ai the yeah you know our our saas platform also provides like analytics it's go you mentioned google you mentioned firebase so there are like tons of modern platforms that are like very capable in kind of helping you collate those data and uh and so sharath is appreciating your points thank you oh. <laughs> so these thank are the you. questions that we have as of now 